how are you convert so high? What, what are some things you're doing? Back in the day, I'd write something down and sort of have a little bit of a script there. And eventually you learn that word for word and you just you know, do your little talk when you when you ring it. You've got to ring the person back straight away within five, 10 minutes even. You can literally lose a job within five, 10 minutes. You ring back and they've already got someone else. So you just got to be punctual and on top of it and confident, believe in yourself, have something in your head that you, you're going to say. Just stick to it and, and be positive. That's all you can do. So today we're joined by Peter and you've been with us for more than 10 years and you're from Jimson Building Inspections in Blacktown. And Sam said it'd be great to have a chat to you because you, I think you're one of the first franchisees he put on, but you're one of the first franchisees, I think, up in the New South Wales area because the division's only like, I think, 11 or 12 years old. So you must have been one of the first up in New South Wales back then. So The very first, actually, man. Uh, you were the very first. Yeah, ben Bonnet. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. yeah. So there you go. So you're very first in the division. So how, how was that then coming on as the first, or one of the first franchisees in the division? Well, it was uh, it was scary, but it was also, I guess, I could go anywhere. I could go to any conveyance or any real estate I wanted to. I sort of had the whole New South Wales to work with, so I guess that was a bonus. But yeah, it was scary being the first because, see, you know, you didn't have really anybody to ask questions of other than down in Melbourne. But um, no, I actually am happy I was the first in now because it's worked out to be really well. I wish I'd done it 20 years ago, to be honest. I can't complain. I I mean, as as more franchisees come up, franchisees come on, I guess the pie gets a little bit smaller. The slices of the pie get a bit smaller, but you know, I guess that's how it works, isn't it? I mean, the more the merrier. At the time, then, why, why Jim's Building Specials? What were you doing prior, and and how did you find about the opportunity? <laughs> so I was I was still building work, hands on. Believe it or not, the wife so I uh, think she heard it on Triple M. Okay, actually, <laughs> she yeah. told me, "Why don't you do this? I'm sick of you living at five thirty in the morning and getting home at seven at night." And to be honest, I wasn't really that interested to start with. I more did it for her than, than me, but I'm really glad I did it now. I, I'd never go back. So, so what, a good decision. I was going to say, well, what was it like back in the early days? Because anyway? obviously the training's developed a lot with, with Jim's building inspections in isolation as well to where it is now. But back in the early days, being the pioneers, was it something you just came down to Melbourne and went to the, the boys at the head office or how did that work back then? We did everything down in Melbourne, which, you know, is fine. It's not that far away. All the boys down there were very helpful. They, you know, they've been in it for years. It's not like it's only just started up. They had been going for a while. So there was a lot of uh, information and knowledge there. And the app the app that we use, even though it was still in its infancy, it was still better than anything that was out on the market at the moment, at that time. Still at the moment, it's still one of the best apps for building inspections I think there is. Uh, very easy to do to reports, but they're also very easy to read for the, um, the clients. I, I read some other reports and I, I can't understand them, but I'm a builder. So I don't know how lay people who are buying a house who are, have no idea about building are, are reading these reports that are out there, but I, I think ours are the best. Is that just in terms of how they're structured or just in, you, you break it's it down better? Or how, yeah. The thing about them, the way they're structured, the way they, the way you read them, they, they, you scroll through and it's just easy to read and, you know, it's just simple. It's, you can't get confused. There's pictures, there's, there's um, summary, the, um, defect summaries and it's, it's all just well laid out. That was something that, that got me in as well because- I've never seen anything like it. Yeah, it's and pretty... It's, it's starting getting better. Like at the time, it, I mean, everything gets better with age, but it's just getting better and better. I mean, obviously, they, they've always got bugs to work out, but they, they're pretty good with that. They get onto it straight away and they you know, they look after us. And have you seen the division grow besides obviously there being more franchisees? Have you seen it develop over your, your, your journey? Well, <laughs> I'm sort of in my own little world here. <laughs> um, I don't... I talk to Sam as much as I need to, which is hardly ever. He rings me more than I ring him. I mean, he rings me a lot, so he's really on top of things. But um, look, I don't know. I, I guess it's it's getting bigger and better all the time, but um, there are a lot more franchisees now, so we tend to help each other out. Yeah, look, I, I guess because I was the first one in, I, I was able to set myself up really well and I was able to switch off leads about a year and a half in. Well, I haven't really needed much help for the last eight, nine years, to be honest. Well, I noticed that because because I, I looked at your system and I normally look at the customer service rating for the franchisees and I can always talk about that. But yours has NA, which means you haven't got one one survey, and that's because you don't um, take leads or you haven't taken leads for a very very long time, and so that means customers can't leave a survey on the system. Yeah, so um, yeah, I haven't really set my uh, my email signature up to sort of sort of let them give it give them the opportunity to sort of leave me a review or a. I'm just not. I've got to get on to that actually because um, that's the future, isn't it? But um, yeah, I'm not really on the system at all, to be honest. You are. You are. That's why I was having a look. I was trying to look for some information to talk about. I said, no, not applicable for the surveys, which is the first yeah, time I've come across that. So that's been for about 
Well, that's been eight or nine years now, which yeah. I guess is good. It's a good thing. It's a good thing. It's it is. Really good. Yes. He wants it, you know, perfect world. Everybody doesn't need leads and then we need more franchisees to take the leads. But um, a little bit easier for me than it is for the other guys because I was first in, but it's been a good journey. So how did you build your business up then to, to a point where you, you haven't been taking leads for nine years? Was it just based on referrals or how how'd you get how did you get to that point where you haven't been able to take, need to take a lead from gyms for nine years? Well, to be honest, I mean, the, the first year or two was hard. I mean, you've got to get yourself out there and knock on doors and get a lot of doors <laughs> in your face as well. But I just, yeah, I just kept trying and, you know, eventually you do a good job, it pays off because I'd get conveyances and real estates ringing me up to say, can we get you to do a report for us because we've seen what you've done and, you know, it goes from there. And other solicitors' conveyances telling other solicitors and conveyances that, you know, this guy does a good job, use him. That's how I, I did it, I suppose. I guess now it'll be a little bit harder. You know, I just try to do a good job every time and, you know, it pays off. And what else did you do for your local area marketing in the first year or two? So you said knocking on doors. So literally going around knocking on doors. Was that just the real estate agents or just had it? Well, what state, are you talking about? The states, conveyances, solicitors, all that sort of stuff. I, you know, I'd go around to the real estates and offer free inspections just to, you know, give it an idea of what I do. Uh, same for conveyances. And look, literally it can just be walking in at the right time, right place at the right time. I got one conveyance or I literally rang her up the day after she told her last inspector to get lost and... And you know, it was meant to be, I suppose. And um, she gave me a chance that she's used me ever since. But yeah, I guess I didn't do much. Um, I don't think I did much advertising or, you know, I guess driving around in the car and being the first one in, I guess it was just me and my car driving around. It wasn't like there was 20 Jim's cars driving around, but I just do pound the pavement and, and just talk to every real estate and solicitor and conveyancer I saw and just, you know, tried to do the best I could every time. I was going to, it might now sound like it's much, but it is, it is a lot because sometimes people find it very hard to do what you did and that's just go introduce themselves without use of that sort of thing coming from an employee environment to that. And Terrifying. a lot of people, yeah. How, well, how'd you push through it then? Because this is a really good thing to talk about for new franchisees. I guess that wasn't, wasn't that hard for me because I'd have to, in my old business, I'd go out, quote jobs, you know, you'd have to stick your foot in the door then too, but um, you just got to do it. I mean, you got to trust yourself. You got to back yourself. You got to believe in yourself and, and just do it. I mean, um, easy to say, I guess. Much harder to do. But look, a lot of the times I was, I was just in the right place at the right time. But, you know, that's probably dumbing it down a little bit because I, a lot of my work I did get from referrals and, and, and doing a good job in the first place. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's all I can say is just do it. I mean, you have to. You can't just sit back and wait for the leads to come in. I guess I guess you could do that, but that's not going to maximize your potential or, your, you know, you won't get as many jobs and as many referrals and, and contacts that way I don't think plus you save yourself a lot of money not having to pay lead fees for that long as well so the, the, fr- the franchise well, it's probably not a lot for, well yeah no. <laughs> yeah I guess I did but look the first couple of years I oh I got every lead I suppose but I'd convert I mean I'd honestly convert 95 to 97 percent of them so wow it didn't really matter because it was a bit of a discount set up I think if you converted so many and you know you'll pay you'll pay a small amount of money to to get a job, I mean, it's worth it. You know, and what was your the tire kickers are the ones that sort of are a bit of a problem. Like you, you can't win every job. And I mean, sometimes I ring out just asking for advice. It's hard. You know, you'll still try and convert that, but sometimes you're never going to get the job. But you know, there's more good ones than there is bad ones. And what sort of conversion advice then for people? What how you convert so high? What, what are some things you're doing? Back in the day, I'd write something down and sort of have a little bit of a script there, and eventually you learn that word for word, and you just. You know, do your little talk when you when you ring it. You've got to ring the person back straight away. We're in five, 10 minutes even. You can literally lose a job within five, 10 minutes. You ring back and they've already got someone else. So you just got to be punctual and, and on top of it, and confident, believe in yourself, but have have something in your head that you, you're you going to say, unlike now. <laughs> and just stick to it and, and, and yeah, be positive. That's all you can do. Advice about the script. I haven't heard many people mention this before. So how big was your script? Was it just... Um... Um, only a couple of lines or you know a couple of things to sort of get me moving in the right direction as far as what I was talking about but you know I didn't um write down a whole script and then memorize it but it was just you know words or little bits and pieces that made me think oh don't forget to say this don't forget to say that don't ask me what that was because it was so long ago I can't remember now I just bring up and it's just natural but see I, I don't think I've ever rung up or when I say that I haven't rung up in the last eight years I haven't rung a customer up to try and win a job but the jobs I get they're all jobs already I open my iPad, I go to my emails and there's jobs there that I don't have to do anything for. I just 
well, obviously I had to do it at the start, win those people's respect and trust and to get the work. But yeah, the, the work is provided to me and I don't have to chase it. So that's, you know, it's great. But you've, but you've put in a lot of, like it might, it might what good, good advice on your franchisees is um, you've got to put in, as you said, don't rely on the leads. You've got to get out there and get yourself out there as well. Whether, whether it's going into real estate agents or you know, parking the vehicle somewhere or whatever it is, you've just got to get out there and do it, which I think is really good advice. And because your business is a reflection of that work you've done in the early days to have that referral network. Plus well, you're doing a great job as well, which great work travels, but you've yeah. gone out there and actually done something about it. Whereas sometimes new franchisees might think, you know, I'm buying the business. Jim's going to do all the work for me. I sit at home and wait for the lead to come on, on the, the message. Right. And it's just some, that's not a good way. I mean, it, it is there. Like you, they will provide you with the work, but you've still got to chase it yourself. And that's that, that you mentioned there, take, driving your car around, parking it at soccer games and, you know, going to, going to open homes that you're not involved in and just sitting there in the car, stuff like that will work. You're driving a billboard, basically. Um, you can stand out the front of a, an open home and hand out cards. There's no reason why as long as it's in your own territory, of course. Yep. But there's no reason why you can't do that. Sponsor sponsor local sporting events. Um, I, I think I did a bit of that at the start. But yeah, I, I don't do much now, to be honest. I guess if I had to start again, I don't know what I'd do. I, I, I'm getting a little bit complacent, a little bit comfortable where I am. And I, I guess um, I did all the hard work back at the start, but... Um, whether I'd want to do it again, I don't know, but um, I probably would. It's a, it's a great, it's a great job. It's good money. It's a good, you know, it's, it's easy, not easy work, but if you can get your head around the, the paperwork side of it, um, the inspections and the, that, that all just happens naturally, but you gotta be, you gotta be willing to sit down behind the iPad and do a lot of paperwork. And how many um, inspections are you roughly doing a week? Oh, it varies, but I probably average, oh shit, I don't know, probably average three a day. Can get busier than that, but I guess it can get slower as well so let's let's say three a day that that's comfortable too you don't want to be doing much more than that it's too stressful like yep. there's only so many hours in the day and you don't want to rush so yeah three a day so fif- look 15 to, let's say 15 to 20 a week yep and what sort of hours are you doing are you doing nine to five or are you how are you working your hours no i've never really done nine to five with anything <laughs> uh, i i usually start work about 10 30 11 and then work till about five you know daylight savings you can work a bit later but see I, i'm an early riser so i like to do my paperwork in the morning I'll get up five five thirty and do paperwork till you know ten, but that's just me. A lot of guys will do their reports on site, the iPad, which is great. You can do that. I've just never been that way with it. Like I, I prefer to take my photos on a camera and then download the photos and do the reports at home. Uh, how many photos do you roughly take a report? Because I remember talking to a few guys and they they take a lot. So how many how many photos are roughly included in reports? Oh, it'd be at least one hundred and twenty to one hundred one hundred and fifty to two hundred. So. No. Why would I put every photo in the report too. If I'm not using it, I still put it in the information section. The more photos you can take, the better, I think. And how's that compared to other sort of reports that you've seen or been provided? You're lucky to get a photo of the front of the house on some of them. They're, they're, a lot of these reports are out there. They're just generic reports with uh, the photo of the house on the front. You just can't tell that it's actually customized to that house. Whereas our, our reports, all the photos are from that house. And yeah, the more information you can provide, the better for the client. And I was going to say as well, what type of reports have you been offering in the business or been asked to do over the years in your business? Oh, all of them. Are, you know, dilapidation, uh, asbestos, building and pests. You know, I can do pest only. I can do build only. New build, stage construction. I didn't really get into strata or all that sort of stuff. I, I did uh, some training for some meth testing, but I never did one of them. So I tried to do a little bit of everything, but I mainly just do building and pests with a little bit of... Um, a little bit of asbestos sampling and um, PCI, sort of practical completion stuff, as well, but mainly building and pest of older houses. And what's some stuff that customers should look out for? Because building inspection has been in the news recently. There's a couple of, of obviously builders and stuff you know, going bust and there's yeah. you know, they're rushing builds and there's a pretty big you know guy on YouTube and stuff who goes around showing all these sorts of things. So yeah, what are things? It's pretty good. He's very, very he's, monotone, but he's, he's pretty good at what he does. Well, he's, he's, well, he's good in educa- educating people and it's quite, you know, it's quite when you watch some of those videos, you think, gee, where's some of the stuff that's been done on these sites? But from your perspective, what do you sort of think about the whole customers, what sh- things they should look out for when they should get your guys involved? In the older houses, which is what I mainly do, yeah, look, I guess you're mostly worried about waterproofing, weatherproofing and, and structural issues, I guess, but, you know, blocked gutters, rusty gutters, uh, roof exteriors are in good condition, you know, cracks in brickwork. Leaky showers, you know, obviously termites, but they're not always obvious. So it's not like a client walking through a, an open home can, can spot termites, but 
you know, you can spot cracks in brickwork and cracks inside the house, and you can see, you can usually tell if a shower is leaking. You can tell if gutters are blocked. You can tell if the roof exterior is in good condition. You know, they're the main things. A lot people ask me what do I look for, and it's like, well, nothing and everything. Like I'm not, I'm looking for everything, but it'll jump out of me. I don't write anything down. I just take photos of everything. And um, yeah, I guess it's hard to say, but those are the main things. I mean, there's a lot of little bits and pieces that you'll put in a report. There's not much else to put in, but I try to focus on the big things and then the little things will come at the end of the report. But really, it's only the big things that you're worried about. They're, they're the things that cost you money. And then people say, why don't you put anything good in there? It's, well, you know, the good stuff doesn't cost you money. So you tend to not so much skip over it. I'll mention stuff if it's worth mentioning, but truly um, really the bad stuff that yeah, you're worried about. And it's, like I said, it's usually roof exteriors, gutters, showers, big cracks, that sort of stuff. It sounds like an obvious question, but has has your reports like how many people have you sort of saved from you know from buying something where they've just heart set in it and then obviously they've got your report and just pulled out yeah, all that happens a bit. I mean it yeah. you feel bad for everybody, but I guess at the end of the day that's what you're there to do, right? And it's good it, it's good. You, you you're sort of they they're happy but they're sad at the same time, especially if their heart set on it. But I don't I mean I don't push anybody one way or the other, but most people can read between the lines. But it happens, yeah, you know, maybe five in a hundred people, you might talk them out of, you know, you're not there to try and talk people out of buying anything and you don't want to, you know, I'm not, I don't necessarily want to upset real estates and what have you, but it's like I report on what I see. I mean, if it's there and it's worth talking about, well, I'm going to talk about it. And a lot of real estates I use and they're the only ones I really do like to use are ones that don't care what I say. It is what it is. And if it burns a sale, it burns a sale. What do you, I mean, what can you do? I mean... I always talk to my clients after I've done the report too because, you know, when they're reading the report, it's a bit scary. It always sounds worse than it is. So I like to have a chat to them and talk them through it because, you know, you can save a sale that way too in that they were gonna, they were not going to buy the place and you've talked them through the um, defects and they're like, oh, it's not that bad. So you've got to talk to your clients after you've done the report too. You have to. And Jay, do you want to talk about your service standards, what you guys provide maybe compared to others? Like, you know, someone gets a report and then as you said before alluded to before like they might just be left with it and you know they've got no idea about it so maybe just talk about their standards of service or what should a customer expect from a good building inspection service well you want to be able to talk to your inspector like a like a like a normal person like you don't want to be left in the dark you don't want to have a report that you really can't understand and then nobody to talk to about it so i'm more than happy i, I don't care if they ring me 20 times i'd rather them call me than worry about something that i need to worry about and then i want them to worry about stuff that they need to worry about too so, you know, I don't charge extra for chatting to people over the phone for sometimes it can be half an hour, an hour even. But, you know, you, you want to make sure they're happy with what they're doing and confident. It's a big decision and a lot of money for some people, well, for everybody at the moment. So I'm more than happy to offer that extra level of service where I talk to people. I'm, I'm more than happy to do things while I'm there. I mean, if they want me to measure things or no, they want to take this wall out or whatever, I can always give advice on that. But yeah, I mean, just do what you can. I, I I try to look at every house I can buy it for someone I know or someone in my family. So um, if someone in my family was asking me questions, I'd, I'd do my best to answer it. And it's the same with a client. I, I don't care who they are. I'm, I'm happy to talk and make sure they're happy with what they're getting. A lot of blokes aren't. I mean, you'll get a lot of blokes, they won't talk to you. And it's like, I paid that they paid you the money to do a report for them. They're your client. Why aren't you talking to them? Why aren't you giving them information and, and, and helping them through the report? But not everybody's like that. That's something that customers should know the difference between gyms and other other people is just the standard of the reporting and as you just said, the, the customer service as well, which goes really yeah, important with it. Very important. Very important. Yeah. I mean, you know, and we're not the cheapest, we're not the dearest either, but you do get what you pay for. But having said that, being the dearest, if you if you're charging top dollar doesn't mean you're the best at what you do. I don't care what I'm getting for the job, I'll still do every job the same and no matter what. I think that's that's the only way to be. Now, my question for you, Peter, is you've been with us for so many years, but you haven't taken a lead for eight years. So the question people might be thinking, well, why do you stay with gyms then? So what what, what keeps yeah. you involved with gyms building inspections? And my dad asked me that all the time, actually. <laughs> well, I don't know. It's just good being part of something bigger. You get a lot of work just because of the fact that you are with gyms. A lot of people respect gyms, or gym in particular. But I've done the sums, and I think, I think I might be, maybe I'm $150, $200 a week better off if I didn't go with gyms. It's not worth it to me. If I left gyms, my insurance would be different pricing. My I'd have to organize my own app. Uh, if something did go wrong, you know, touch wood, who am I going to... I don't have a access to solicit. Well, I suppose I could get a solicitor, but the backup and the, all that sort of stuff, you know, my franchise all provides for me, I, I think it's worth uh, the money. 
in my opinion. Yeah, I, yeah well, glad to hear that as well. And the fee, because the fees you alluded to, it's not overly much. It's a flat fee model for people thinking we're taking percentage of turnover. We don't. It's a flat fee model. Yeah, value for fees. You just outline the value for fees. That's what you see the fees for the value, and you stay long term is because of those sorts of things. Yeah, well, that's it. I mean, the fees. Well, the fees are the fees. I mean, I know some companies that charge a percentage. That would be worse. I mean, I guess the better you do, the more they make up. A flat fee, I know where I stand. I know how much I'm paying. Uh, I know what I need to make each week, along with everything else that all the other costs I've got. But um, yeah, the, just being part of something, having all the contacts and, and help is worth it. But like I said, I've done the numbers and yeah, I could go by myself. But imagine one bloke doing his insurance. I mean, my premiums ast- would be astronomical. And then a decent app, the app backup and the, inf- the IT and all that sort of stuff. It's, to me, it's worth it. So I'm more than happy to say. And what's your advice to the new blokes coming into the divisional girls? What's so what's your advice to them starting? Because you would have seen a few people come come in your time. So what's your sort of best advice to new starters in any maybe let's say just in gyms building specialists or any gyms franchise? Well, just don't, don't sit back and expect the leads to come in for one. Be prepared to cop a lot of knockbacks, but don't let that put you off. Keep going. Believe in yourself. Trust yourself. Uh, be confident. Do a good job. Just do, like that was one thing that uh, gyms. I think they um customer's always right. I mean, not so much that the customer's always right, but do your best. And if, if it's not good enough, well, just make sure a customer's happy because at the end of the day, I'd rather someone say to a hundred people how great I am than tell a thousand people how bad I am. I just want to make sure I've done the best I can on the day and um, just treat every job like you're doing it for yourself. Then if you miss something, well, so be it. You've missed something, but you can't say it's through lack of trying. Don't leave anything out there. Like, Don't get complacent. Don't not look here or not look there or Don't crawl under the house because you're just not feeling like it. You've got to get where you can get as long as it's safe. Just do the job to the best of your ability and and expect the knockbacks, but just realize that eventually it will all pay off. Yeah, because you've got a great business and you you put you paid your dues in the early days, as you said, it was terrifying to knock on the knock on doors and to go in like it and that that is hard for a lot of people and it's you know, people can sometimes give up and not do it, but your rewards are there with your business. Like you, you know, your referral base for nine years or eight years, you haven't taken a lead from gym. So you, all that hard work you put in the first year or two, pushing through those sort of uncomfortable moments have led you to where you are. So it's just trying to get out to, just trying to show to people that, you know, if you push through it in the early days, you're going to get some challenges. You're just so much better for it. And your business is an amazing business. Like, as I said, I've done more than 200 interviews with franchisees and I've never seen one with NA for no commendations or surveys because they don't take leads from the system to get a survey result from gyms so it's quite impressive and a credit to what you've been able to build well to be honest with you i don't even know how i'd get back on <laughs> after in, i'd have to ring sam up and ask him to uh set, down to gyms online yeah <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know how to use the um gyms online is it even an app anymore what is it now they've got gyms jobs but gyms online is the what you do your work requirements stuff for yeah, yeah. I wouldn't even know how to open it <laughs> <laughs> that's good and and i was ever see how how's your you know do you, do you buy your wife a nice present every year for getting you into the gyms building inspections business? I'll, I'll say I will, but I don't. <laughs> I'm still tell you why. Uh, she's a good woman. Um, she's a smart girl, and um, she's always right. That's 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 thanks. I could agree with them all. I was going to say as well with Sammy as well. You mentioned Sam before your franchise. Or and Sam, how, how Sammy and, and the boys been going with the support level? Obviously, you don't need too much support from them, but how have they been? Excellent. Excellent. Sam's a good guy. Yeah. He helps me when I need help. He's always there. You know, by ringing, he always calls me back within five minutes. Yeah, he's great. He's easy to get along with. He's easy to talk to. Yeah, I, I can't complain about Sam at all. I can't complain about any of them, really. I'd be glad to hear that. I was going to say as well, thank you for um, being on Brand with the Beard today. It's been quite impressive, most impressive. We've had a few beards on here, but I'd have to say yours is quite impressive before we right up there. Does anyone, do people call you Jim at all when they see the uniform? as a joke? They have. I'm telling yeah. you, um, I've been called Jim many times. I wish I was Jim. He, um, his bank account's quite healthy, I think. Um, but no, I have been. And um, funny, really. But it's normally, um, I guess he hasn't got his beard anymore, has he? No, he hasn't. He couldn't grow, grow it back if he tried. So he I've, been trying, been trying, I've been trying to get him to do it, but he can't do it. Yeah, on the on the car and like on the shirt, he's, he's got the beard. And I guess yeah. when I'm the hat, you just like look a little bit like Jim from a distance. I don't know. But I've been called Jim a lot. Even though I've told them people my name, I still get called Jim. I guess people just revert back to the gym, you know? Absolutely, for sure. Well, Peter, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, Sam wanted us to interview you because you've been his first, one of his, I think you were his first franchisee, and you, you said you've been a great story for 10 years. And you're, it's amazing, as I said, I've never interviewed someone who's got no 
survey results at all. And that's because you haven't been down for work to take leads for eight years, nine years, which is a big testament to yourself and all that hard work you put in, in the early days. So credit to you, mate. Yeah, thank you very much. No, worries. I'll get that voucher to you as well. So you get an email from a call. It takes around five to six business days. If it doesn't come through, let me know and our team will follow it up. And it's um yeah, it's worth around six hundred bucks. So it's a yeah, good good, good little voucher. Well, I buy that. You know, that's great that you're doing that, but that's not why I said yes to Sam. But now I'm more, more than happy to take it. I'm sure my wife will um, be happy to spend it somewhere. Absolutely. No worries. Well, thank you very much, Peter. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Good, mate. No worries. See you, mate. Bye. Thank you for listening to the episode of the Gyms Podcast. If you want to learn more about the Gyms Group, head to gyms.net or call us on 131 546 Australia or 0800 454 654 New Zealand. And if you did like the episode as well, please make sure you leave a review or a comment or a thumbs up or a comment on the video as well. We appreciate your support. And until next episode, we hope you have a great week.